Secondly, I offer my pranam thousands of times at the lotus feet of my Param Gurudev and to Srila Prabhupada and all of our Sri Gupanuga Gaudiya Guru Parampara. And finally, I offer my pranam to Pujapat Paramadvaiti Maharaj, Pujapat Sri Bhaktivedanta Yati Maharaj and all the assembled Vaishnavas and Vaishnavas my pranam to you. Vanchakal Paturu Vestu, Rupas and Dovyavata, Odittana Bhavati Go Vaishnavi Yoga So today we are celebrating the Adivas Titi of Sri Krishna Janavastami. That means the day before Krishna Janavastami. This morning we heard how Chukadev Goswami 
at the end of the ninth canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, he gave a little glimpse for a moment in one verse of the sweetness of Krishna in Vrindavan, like a shopkeeper offering some sample as a prolobana to entice the customer. And then Shukadev Goswami went into trance. Parikshit Maharaj, he began to glorify Harikata. Nivritata Sharu Pagiyamar. Bhavosa Dach Srota Mano Biramar. Ka Uttama Sloka Gunanavada. Kumam Viraji Tabina Pashogana. Only the Pashogna, one who is cruel like a hunter, will not listen to Harikata. Oh Shukadev Goswami, I want to know, how is it that Balaram is known as the son of Devaki and also the son of Rohini? How is it possible? Please, can you explain to me, how, why is it that Vasudev Maharaj carried Krishna from Mathura across the Jamuna to Nanda Goku? Can you tell me, what did Krishna do in, in Braja? And afterwards, when he came to Mathura, why did Krishna kill his own uncle, Kamsa Maharaj? Because this is also against Dharma to kill your own uncle. Why did he do this? Afterwards, when he went to Dwoka, how many wives did he marry? And what pastimes did he perform there? So when Prichit Maharaj asked these questions, Shukadev Goswami congratulated him. But he said, now you have been fasting without eating, without drinking a drop of water and without sleeping for four days. Now it's the beginning of the fifth day. So don't you want to take something to eat and something to drink before I explain? Prakshimara said, no, 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 not at all. Because by drinking this nectar of your Harikata, then I have forgotten hmm, about my body, my mind. It is nectar. And by this, I don't experience any hunger, hunger or thirst. Go on speaking. Just go on speaking, go on speaking. Hmm? Just like once, there was a yogi. And this yogi, he had a, a pot carved from a fruit, dried fruit. And uh, this yogi was going door to door saying, Bhikshan Dehi, Bhikshan Dehi, please fill my begging bowl. And people were coming and putting fruit in. But it did not matter how many people were putting fruit in the begging bowl. His begging bowl was still empty. He was calling, will no one fill my small begging bowl? So then another yogi heard him saying this and he came there. Oh, Radhe Radhe. <laughs> what are you doing? I have a small begging bowl, but no one will fill my small begging bowl. So then that yogi, he said, I can give you some Ganga Jao, some water of the Ganges. So he took his small, his also small water pot and then he began to pour. And when he poured, the yogi said, may my pot never be empty. Hmm? And the other yogi, he was receiving that water, he said, may my pot never be full. So in this way, one yogi was pouring and pouring, and the other yogi was receiving and receiving, and it was going on and on and on, without any end. Yeah. So, Prakshit Maharaj said, oh, I want to be like that. You are telling the glories of Krishna without any end. You are speaking and speaking about Krishna, but you are never empty. Always more anubhav, more realizations are coming all the time. And I am listening and it doesn't matter how much I listen, I am never full. I want to listen to more. So as long as we are both alive, then please go on speaking. So Harikata is like this, unlimited, transcendental. So it is a Swayam Prakash, self-manifesting. Don't think that Harikata is just a conversation. Tasmin Mahan Mukarita Marupich Charitra Piyush Shesh Sarita Parita Sravanti Yete Ye Pibantya Vitishon Ripurga the Khanes Tanas Prashanta Sana Hrit Hrit Vayashoka Moha. The meaning is that the 
the Mahan, the great Vaishnavas, their hearts are so high, very high, in Goloka Vrindavan. And if someone will approach a Vaishnava and with a mood of humility and service and eager to hear, then the heart of that Vaishnava melts. And just as on the top of the Himalayas, when the sun comes, then the snow melts, and, the, and then that molten snow comes flowing down automatically in many, many rivers. So in the same way, Sadhu is not uh, by memory or anything speaking, but rather when his heart is melting out of a Shishya Vatsala, that is parental affection for the disciples, then naturally, spontaneous, from Galok Vrindavan, Krishna's Leela is coming down to his heart, and then Tasmin Mahan Mukarita, the leer is turning into sentences, into words. Mukarita Manu Bich Charitra, the leela of Madhusudan Sri Krishna is transformed into words. And that kata is flowing in all directions continuously. And then if the disciple will be listening, with very deep ears, like the part of that yogi, never full, always eager to hear more and more. Hmm? Then the Harikata will go in the ear of that person. And then Tannas Prashant Asrita by Ashoka Moha. That person who will listen, he cannot be touched by thirst. He cannot be touched by hunger. He cannot be touched by fear. He cannot be touched by lamentation. He cannot be touched by any material attachments. Why? Because simply by hearing Harikata, one enters into the Lila. Anugraha Bhaktanam Manasam Dema Sritaha Tadrishi Bhajate Krido Yashrutva Tatparo Bhavet Shukadev Goswami said that when Krishna comes to this world in his human-like form and performs his pastimes, then it is the duty of everyone that we must hear these pastimes. And by hearing, that means you must become absorbed. But here, become absorbed does not mean only absorbed in hearing the Leela, but that you, in your spiritual body, in your swaroop, will become absorbed into the Leela yourself. And you enter into that Leela. So in Brajit he said, Patute Parda Ute. Understand? Patute Parda Ute. When the kata begins, then the curtain rises. Just like in the theatre, all the audience sit down in the theatre. And then the, the orchestra begins to play. And then the curtain, when the curtain rises, then everyone can see the drama on the stage. So in the same way, when the Shuddha Vaishnavas are speaking Harikata, then the audience see the curtain of Yoga Maya is rising, and then they see the beautiful drama of Krishna. Tambakti yoga paribhavita ritsaroja asesu tekshita patana nunata punksa. Lord Brahma has said, if the heart is saturated with devotion, when we listen to the pastimes of Krishna, then we can see that Leela through the ears, through tekshita pata, the path of Krishna's darshan, seeing Sri Krishna through the ears. So, Prichit Maharaj said, I don't need to eat or drink anything, please go on speaking. The pastimes of Krishna. <laughs> so then, Shukadev Goswami, he began to describe that in the Astavinsa Chatur Yuga Dwarpa Shesh, at the end of the Dwarpa Yuga, in the 28th millennium of Vaivasvatamanu, hmm? at that time the earth was overburdened with the dem demons who had taken human forms and were ruling the world as very powerful kings. And they were putting a great burden on the earth. Dharma was going down and the irreligion was going up. And they had many thousands of demonic soldiers also by which they were enforcing their tyranny. So at that time, Mother Earth was crying. Why? Because this earth and everything in this earth is all the paraphernalia of Krishna's service. Hmm? So see Krishna has given us these human bodies and all the flowers and fruits and milk and all the wealth of the earth is meant to 
serve Krishna. Hmm? But the people were taking and enjoying for themselves. So Mother Earth was very sad and she was crying. So then Bhumi Devi, Mother Earth, she took the form of a cow and she went to Lord Brahma and placed her case before Lord Brahma. I am very sad. All my energy and resources are being exploited. Hmm? Now, uh, she came there oh, with the other demigods also, like Indra and Shiva and others. But they did not go to the Brahma Lok, Satya Lok. They didn't approach Brahma in Satya Lok. Hmm? There are two forms of Brahma. One Brahma is in Satya Lok, he's called Hiranya Garbha Brahma. And another Brahma, is within the universe on the top of Mount Sumeru and he has a court there so they went to the court of Lord Brahma there on the top of Mount Sumeru they could not go to that such a Lord Brahma because another pastime was going on with him you know in the Sakti Yug many millions of years before there was a king named Kakudmi and Kakudmi had a daughter named Revati he thought my daughter is coming to the age when she should get married but to whom shall I marry my daughter? And he made a list of princes who he thought could be eligible. And he went to Lord Brahma in Satyalok with his daughter to present the list and Lord Brahma will give a final decision on who should be the husband. So when he arrived, Lord Brahma was uh, busy. He was listening to a musical performance hmm, of Paha and Huhu Gandharva. Two very famous Kandavas, Paha and Huhu. <laughs> So they were doing their musical performance and it lasted for about uh, the, last, the next 24 minutes. So the king was waiting, waiting, waiting. And then after the performance, he presented his list to Lord Brahma. Lord Brahma looked at the list and he laughed. He said, uh, actually all these kings on the list have died millions of years ago. <laughs> because, you know the theory of relativity. On the different planets, there's a different time scheme. So in Brahmalok, though he was there for 24 minutes listening to the music, but millions of years had passed. And every one of those kings, those princes was dead. Also his son and grandson and great-grandson and great-great-grandson all were dead. So Brahmaji said, this list is useless. Kukudri Maharaj, he said, then who, who can uh, my daughter marry? He said, if you go back to earth, then you will uh, arrive and it will be, there was Satya Yuga when they came there. Satya Yuga goes over, Treta Yuga goes over, Dwarpa Yuga goes almost over. So when you time, by the time you get back, it will be Dwarpa Yuga and Krishna will be in Dwarka and his brother Balaram will be a very good match for your daughter. So then Kukurmi Maharaj came down to us and when he got back, now it was two Yugas later, so in Satya Yuga people were very big. And so everyone was only up to his knee. And, and he came and said, Lord Brahma said, my daughter has to marry Balaram. But Balaram was only up to his daughter's knee. So this will not be a good match in the wedding. <laughs> so at night when, when the Ravati was asleep, then Balaram came there with his plow. And you know when with your mouse, when you have a picture and you want to resize the picture, and you click with the mouse and you resize. So Balaram came with his plow and he resized, <laughs> put the feet in, and just put the arms in, bring the head in like this. And with his plow he resized, Revati, that she was the right size to be married to him. And after that they were married. So, at this time, when Mother Earth, Bhumi Devi, was crying, and wanted to go to Lord Brahma, that was in between the performance of Huhu and Haha Gandharva. So she could not go to that Brahma, that is Hiranyagarbha Brahma in Satyalok. So she went to the uh, Vairaja Brahma, his name is Vairaja Brahma, on, in his court on the top of Mount Meru. So then Brahma, he, he told the demigods, come with me, we'll go to the Kir Sagar, to the ocean of milk. Because there, on an island in the ocean of milk, Lord Kirdakashai Vishnu, the Paramatma, is there. So Brahmaji, Mother Earth, and all the Devatas, they came on the bank of the ocean of milk. And they cannot see even the Paramatma. They cannot even see Kirdakashai Vishnu. So they began to offer prayers. All the demigods together, they began to pray. Sahasya Shisha Purusha 
सहस्रक्ष सहस्रपाट साभूमिन विश्वतो प्रत्वा समाधि And when he was in trance, he heard Akashvani and her aerial voice. So actually, the other devotees did not hear it. It came in the Ridakash, in the sky of the heart of Lord Brahma. And that voice said to him, "Oh, now the time has come that I will appear in this world." along with all my incarnations so though they had play, prayed to bhagavan vishnu but it was not bhagavan vishnu who re replied whose voice replied in the heart of brahma it was krishna himself because now it was coming close to the time of sri krishna's appearance so the voice of krishna spoke to brahma and brahma explained afterwards to the devatas the supreme lord will appear very soon uh, in the uh, to the wife of basudev maharaj to devaki as the son of basudev and devaki and the supreme lord will appear in this world and all the avatars all the anksas will be present within him you demigods you should take birth now on earth in the yadu dynasty to assist him in his past times and also the um, surastriya that means the female demigods they should also take birth on earth to in order to serve the supreme lord so the meaning here is that sometimes sri krishna expands himself and appears in the heavenly planets who is an example lord vamandev lord vamandev appeared as the son of kasyapa and aditya so when the supreme lord appears then his shakti is also appear so when krishna uh, manifests his form of vamandev in this world then the shaktis of vamandev also appear as female devatas to serve him so now see krishna the original supreme lord is appearing in the world he told brahma tell those shaktis of vamandev to now appear on earth and take birth where in the yadu dynasty but in braja among the gopis and then those gopis they will be priya sakis because as krishna has expanded as lord vamandev to come in this earth so simply the uh, sakis the priya sakis of radharani in the spiritual world they expand to become the servants of lord vamandev then when krishna comes they take birth as gopis and they become the followers of the of the nitya priya sakis mm? so in this way mm, when krishna appears then mm, the living entities who have never been in krishna lila before mm, in this sense the expansions of the priya sakis appear in the heavenly planets and then on earth and then become followers of the nitya priya sakis so then lord brahma told them krishna told me also that before he appears lord sankarshan will also appear in this world and prepare for his appearance and also along with him vishnu maya bhagavati hmm? that means yoga maya devi will also appear why karyate kri uh, mm, karyase karyate sambhavishyati shukadev goswami is describing the yoga maya will appear karyate sambhavishyati for some special duty the indication is this that though krishna and yoga maya will be born as twins from the womb of yashoda even though she is the sister of krishna but they will not have a relationship of brother and sister and your shoulder will not have a relationship of yogamaya is my daughter so she he, lord brahma told them 
that Krishna did not say Yoga Maya will appear as a sister of Krishna, but Yoga Maya will appear along with Krishna, Karyate Sambhavisyati, for some special karya, to do some special duty. So Madhi Yashoda will not see Yoga Maya as her daughter, and also Yoga Maya will not tie a Raki on the arm of Krishna on Rakshabandhan Day. Huh? And on Bratri Dvitya, on, the, on Brothers Day, when the brothers go to the houses of their sisters and the sisters feed them a feast with their own hand. So Krishna will not go to Yoga Maya and receive some uh, a feast from her. So that relationship will not be there. Only Karyate Sambhavishyati. Yoga Maya will appear for some special duty, some special service. What is that special service? Uh, to arrange all the marriages of the gopis, so gopis will be married to others, so that Krishna will have the lila. Yoga Maya Mupasrataha. Krishna will have the lila of meeting with Braj gopis secretly in Ras Lila, in the mood of Parakya, Parakya Rasa. So Yoga Maya will not be on the stage. Yoga Maya will always be behind the curtain and managing all the uh, minute details of Krishna's Lila. So then, after Lord Brahma told the message of the Devatas, of the Supreme Lord to the Devatas, then he returned to Brahma Lok and all the Devatas became happy that uh, soon Krishna will come and take away the burden of the earth. Now, meanwhile, down on earth, Shukadeva Goswami described how uh, Maharaj Surasain, the son of Kartavir Arjuna, since his time, the Yadu dynasty had been residing in Mathura. However, Mathura Bhagavan Yatra Nityam Sani Hito Hari. The meaning is that though the Yadu dynasty had only been residing in Mathura since that time, but it's not time for the babies to appear. That's. <laughs> we'll come later. They have not appeared yet. <laughs> Balaram and Krishna and Yoga Mind did not appear. So, though the Yadu dynasty had been residing in Mathura from that time, but Shukadev Goswami said, No, no, no. Mathura Bhagavan Yatra Nityam Sanghito Hari. Krishna is always residing in Mathura, but he is aprakat, unmanifest, and very soon he will become prakat, manifest, but he is eternally residing there. So Mathura is such a great place. In the Padma Purana he said, Aho Madhupuri Dhanya Vaikuntats Cha Gariyasi Dina Mekam Nivasena Haro Bhakti Prajayate Oh, Madhupuri Dhanya. How fortunate is Madhupuri? Mathura. Why? Vaikuntha Chagariyasi. It is greater than Vaikuntha. That means Mathura on earth. Hmm? It is greater than Vaikuntha. Dina Mekam Nivasena Haro Bhakti Prajayate. If a person will just spend one day in Mathura, then Bhakti will appear in their heart. The dham is so powerful. Hmm? So, what is the meaning of Mathura? Matanapi, hmm? Matanati, Bhakta, Ridayam, Premna, Matanapi, Bhakta, Ridayam, Premna, Paraka, Matanati, Papam, Taraka. Mathura is famous as being the dam of Parak and Tarak. Tarak means Matanapi, Patam, Taraka. If someone goes to Mathura, all their sins are destroyed and they are delivered from this world, Tarak. But Mathura is especially Matanapi Bhakta Ridayam Prena. Matana in Sanskrit means journey. Mathura is that dam which churns the hearts of the devotees. So the essence of their bhav will manifest in the form of Prem. So who churns the hearts of the devotees with Prem, that is called Mathura. So there in Mathura, there was a prince in the Yadu dynasty named Basudev. And it was his wedding day. He was getting married to Devaki. Actually, Basudev Maharaj has 18 wives. And among his 18 wives, five of them 
are the daughters of Devak Maharaj. So on this day, he was getting married to Devaki, and the Devaki is the cousin sister of Kamsa Maharaj. So on the day of her wedding, there was a big procession, and uh, Bosudev and Devaki were on the chariot, and there should be a chariot driver. But Kamsa Maharaj was so happy, he was so proud that his sister was getting married, that he came to the chariot driver, he said, my dear friend, you can have a day off. I'll drive the chariot myself. So then Kamsa Maharaj took the reins of the chariot and was driving and there was a big procession with 800 elephants and oh, sorry 400 elephants. There was 1,800 uh, chariots and there were 10,000 horses and thousands, all the residents of Mathura were following in that procession and musicians were playing musical instruments Brahmanas were chanting Vedic mantras and everyone was celebrating and the procession was going on but as the procession was going on suddenly there was Akashvani the sound of a voice in the sky the Akashvani said hmm? Asya stay Astamo Karabho Hanta Yam Bahase Buddha. A Buddha means you fool! You fool, Kamsa! You don't know that the eighth issue of that person whose chariot you are driving will kill you. Hmm? So the eighth issue did not say whether it was a boy or a girl. The eighth issue of the person whose chariot you are driving will kill you. So then comes a Maharaj. Hmm? One minute is, oh, I love my sister so much, and the next minute he grabbed his sister by the hair and he was about to kill her with a sword. Hmm? Basudev Maharaj, he realized, I have to act very quickly to stop Kamsa Maharaj from killing my wife Devaki. So he thought, what diplomatic approach can I use? Hmm? In Sanskrit, diplomacy, uh, politics is called Niti. So in Niti Shastra, there's a description how to very wisely handle every situation. So in Niti, there are four approaches to diplomacy. First, Sam. Sam means you pacify the person by giving very uh, good intellectual arguments. You explain the theory of the situation and persuade them to do the right thing. But Kamsa Maharaj, he is very angry and passionate. A passionate person can, does not have the patience to listen to anything. Hmm? So then, some, it will not work. Then, dumb. Dumb means to give it some money. You can bribe the person to bring them under your control. Bosudev Maharaj thought, what can I do? Kamsa Maharaj is more wealthy than me. He has a whole kingdom. He has so much money, I cannot bribe him. So he thought this will not work. So some dam, then danda. Danda means give punishment. He thought, how can I punish Kamsa Maharaj? He's stronger than 10,000 elephants and he has a big army. If I try to give him a punishment, he'll kill me. So only one method of diplomacy was left. What is that? Bait. Bait means divide and conquer. If the enemy is stronger than you, then in some clever way you have to separate him from his support and, and make division. So that is called bail in politics. So Basudev Maharaj thought, I have to employ this tactic bail. So he said, Oh, Kamsa Maharaj, you are very famous, you have a good reputation. But if you kill your own sister and an innocent woman, and on her wedding day, then everyone will criticize you. Everyone, you lose your fame in this life, they'll criticize you in this life and in your future life also. So, also, there's no danger from her. She will not kill you. It is said her eighth child will kill you. So don't, don't do this. So then comes a Maharaj, he was still angry. So Pastor Maharaj said, began to flatter him. A demonic person is very easily controlled by flattery because they have such a big ego. If you tell them you are very intelligent, you are very wonderful, they say, oh, this person, finally I found a very intelligent person who can see all my great qualities. I love you.
So Basudev Maharaj said, Oh Kamsa, you are a great hero. And great heroes, they are never afraid of death. <laughs> Why? Because for one who has taken birth, then death is certain. <laughs> Everyone will die one day. So a hero is never afraid of death. And what is death anyway? Death is only like one the caterpillar is uh, climbing on a tree from one leaf to another leaf. So the caterpillar puts his front legs on this leaf before he takes his legs from that leaf. And when he's attached there, then he lifts the legs like that. So when our next body is ready, then our subtle body goes there and we give up this gross body. So death is nothing. Vasudev Maharaj said, death is just like waking up from a dream. Hmm? In the dream, in one dream, maybe you dream that you're living in a, in a desert. Mm -hmm. And you are poor, you have no food. And then in another dream, you dream you are living in a palace and you are very wealthy. But every time you wake up from a dream, that situation is over and you see you in another situation, in the next dream. So in the same way, death is only like this. It is like you go to sleep from one situation, you wake up in another situation. Like one dream after another. So you are a great, a great hero who is never afraid of death. In this way, Mm -hmm. Basudev Maharaj tried to flatter Kamsa Maharaj to bring him under control. But still Kamsa Maharaj was not listening. So then Basudev Maharaj, he used a very strong tactic. He said, Oh Kamsa Maharaj, you are in no danger from Devaki. But from her children, from one of her children. So I promise you that whenever she gives birth to a child, I'll give that child to you and you can do what you want with the child. Hmm? So, hmm? Basudev Maharaj, in his life he never told a lie. Hmm? So Basudev Maharaj actually said to Kamsa Maharaj, he said, Na yasyayam te bhayam somya Oh, Somya. Somya means, oh, very gentle. Gentle one. Somya means one whose face is like a moon. When you see their moon-like face, you relax and all your worries go away. So he said to Kamsa, oh, Somya. Oh, moon-like, gentle Kamsa. I will give to you Te Bayam. Te Bayam means, uh, those, Te means those children. Bayam, of whom you are afraid. I'll give you the children of whom you are afraid. But when he said this, then Jogamaya hmm, changed his words. In Sanskrit, if a word ends in E and the next word begins with an A, then this A is a lopa. That means it disappears. Lord Shiva comes and destroys it. And in Sanskrit, it is a, it is a hara, disappears. So, here, Te Bayam, Kamsamaraj took it. I will give you the children of which you are afraid. Hmm? But, Basudev Maharaj said, Te A Bayam. I will give you only those children you are not afraid of. In other words, of the eight children, six of them they'll be jivas, ordinary jivas, and they have no power to destroy Kamsa Maharaj. But two of them, Kamsa Maharaj can be afraid of them. One is Balaram and one is Krishna. So very cleverly, he said, I will give you the children of whom you are afraid. Kamsa Maharaj said, oh, okay, it's a deal. Let's continue with the wedding. Okay, emergency over everyone. Wedding's back on, let's go. And then Kamsa Maharaj was very happily driving the chariot again. This is the nature of demons. Their mind can change in a second. One moment they love you, one moment they want to kill you, the next moment they love you again. <laughs> Cannot put faith in those who have unsteady mind. So, the wedding went on. And after some time, Devaki became pregnant and she gave birth to a boy. His name was Kirtiman. Kirtiman. So when the boy was born, then Basudev Maharaj. Oh. Vidusham. Apeksham Kim means what is it that a, a learned person cannot tolerate. A learned person can tolerate anything. A learned person can be detached from anything. Why? 
because they understand that everything is temporary in this world. So whatever situation is there, they never become disturbed or flustered. So even though it was very difficult, his firstborn son he took from Devaki and bought the son and presented him to Kamsa Maharaj. When Kamsa Maharaj saw the purity, the greatness, the honesty of Bosdev Maharaj, then he said, oh, I am not in any danger from this child. You can just go take the child back. Because the, the arrow boy said, Asyastai astamo verbo, hantai yamba asayibuddha. You fool, the eighth issue will kill you. Mm -hmm. So comes and said, you can take this child back. So then Vasudha Maharaj, he brought the child back to Devaki. And Devaki was very happy, but Vasudha Maharaj was not happy. Why? Because he knows, there's a saying in Shastra, Avyavastita chittasya prasado pi bayankara. Avyavastita chittasya. That means, of that person whose chitta, whose mind is Avyavyasta, that is the, mm, in a state of dishevelment, is, uh, they're unsteady, mm? they have not any mental control, mm? they are not peaceful. So such persons, prasado pi bhayankara, even if they're kind to you, even if such a person with an unsteady mind shows you mercy, then even this mercy, bhayankara, is terrible. Mm? It is to be feared. So Basudev Maharaj was very intelligent and he thought oh okay he gave the child back but i'm still not satisfied because he can do anything mm? but devaki was very happy mm? and she said oh kamsa is so kind to me and so kind to my child so when devaki said kamsa so kind to me and my child and she was blessing Danya Danya, blessings to Kamsa, because he's so kind to me and my child. Then Narad Muni became worried. Narad Muni thought, what is this? If Devaki will give a blessings to Kamsa Maharaj, then Krishna when he comes, he will not be able to kill him. God is all powerful, but the blessings of Vaishnavas are more powerful than Supreme Aham Bhakta Pradino Yashatan Duja. Lord Narayan told the Vasamuni, I am controlled by my devotees. So when the Sudarshan Chakra was chasing after Durvasa to kill him, but the Chakra could not kill him. Why? Because down on earth, Angarish Maharaj was praying. Oh, I hope that he does not undergo any misery on my account. And he was praying for auspiciousness. Though Devasa tried to kill him, he was praying for auspiciousness for Devasa, and for this reason the chakra could not touch Devasa. Hmm? So Narad Muni was thinking, if Devaki is pronouncing a blessing to Kamsa Maharaj, Krishna won't be able to kill him. Hmm? Then what will happen in Krishna Lila? Hmm? So then Narad Muni, he decided, I have to change the situation. So then Narad Muni came, playing his veena, and he arrived in Mathura. To visit, to visit Kamsa Maharaj. He said, Oh Kamsa Maharaj, you've made a mistake. Hmm? That you did not kill that child. Kamsa Maharaj said, I have not made a mistake. The Akashvani said the eighth child will kill me, not the first one. That one said, No. You cannot trust the demigods. Because the voice was from the Devatas. These Devatas, they're very tricky. Hmm? So then Narad. He took a, a plate in his hand <laughs> and taking the plate in his hand, he put mm, eight sweets, eight, mm, the Mathura Pera, right? <laughs> eight sweets from Mathura on the plate. And then he said, Kamsa, which one is this? This one. He said, that's number one. Which one is this? Number two. He said, no, no, this is number eight. Mm? He said, why? Because the eighth child of Devaki will kill you. You are thinking the eighth in time. But they may be thinking about the eighth in space. So when there are eight things in different position in space, any one of them can be the first one, any one of them can be the eighth one. Hmm? Kamsa Maharaj became confused. Hmm? But he understood. The Devatas could be trying to trick me. Narad Muni said, in your previous life you were Kalanemi. And Vishnu killed you. So then Kamsa was very afraid. Hmm? Vishnu should not kill me in this life. <laughs> so then Kamsa Maharaj, 
First of all, he went to his father Ugrasen. Because Ugrasen was the king of the Yadu dynasty. And uh, Kamsa Maharaj is the, his son. Everyone says he's the son, but not really, he's not really his son. Why? Because the wife of Ugrasen, her name is Padmavati. And once she was kidnapped and she was raped by a demon named Drumel Danav. So Kamsa Maharaj is not the son of the great devotee Vaishnav Ugrasen, but he's actually the son of Drumal Dhanava. Hmm? But anyway, everyone thought Kamsa is the son of Ugrasen. And he went to his father and he bowed down to his father. Oh, father, I want to take your foot dust. And he bowed down him to take the foot dust of his father. His father was very happy. He thought, my son is so arrogant, he never gave me any respect. But today, he's come to show me respect. But when Kamsa Maharaj bowed down, then Ugrasen Maharaj heard a sound, click, and Kamsa Maharaj put shackles on his feet, click. Uh -huh. And now Ugrasen Maharaj became prisoner, and he put him in prison with shackles on his feet and on his hands in a jail. Then he put Vasudev and Devaki also in jail, in shackles as well. And he took that child and the first child of Devaki and smashed the child on a rock. So then, every year while being in prison, Devaki was pregnant. And each time, six children were born. And each time Kamsamraj came, when the prison guards heard the crying of the baby, they called Kamsamraj and he came and right in front of Vasudeva and Devaki, he killed their children. Hmm? But then, Devaki again became pregnant. And two months before, Basudev's other wife named Rohini, she used to come and visit in the prison. Rohini became pregnant. And then, after two months, Rohini was sent by Basudev Maharaj. He said, go to Braj, because now Kamsa Maharaj is disturbing everyone. The Yadus were fleeing Mathura. And they became refugees staying here and there in different places. So Vasudev Maharaj thought, Kamsa is so crazy, so evil, what to speak of killing the sons of Devaki? He may start killing the sons of my other wives, just in case. Not to take any chances. So Vasudev Maharaj told uh, Rohini, go and stay in Braj with my cousin brother, Nanda Maharaj. So, in the evening time, Rohini, riding on a mare, on a female horse, she arrived in Braja. And she was welcomed with great love and affection by Nanda and Yashoda, and she stayed there. So, the residents of Braja noticed that Rohini was two months pregnant. Hmm? Then, at that time, Devaki became pregnant. And then, the Krishna told Yoga Maya, you should take the child from the womb of Devaki and transfer to the womb of Rohini. So then, the, that is, Balaram was in the womb of Devaki, and because he was attracted to the womb of Rohini by Yoga Maya, his name is Sankarshan. Karshan means drawn or attracted. So he was transferred to the womb of uh, Rohini, and that um, fetus was Sasta fell away and now he was in the womb of uh, Rohini for another 10 months. So everyone thought that Rohini was pregnant for 14 months. But actually the first two was another child. And then Balaram came, that child went away and so Balaram uh, was in the womb of uh, Rohini for 12 months. He, uh, that is from the Raksha Bandhan day Raksha Purnima to the next Raksha Purnima when he was born, when Balaram was born. So, when the Raksha Bandhan day came, then Rohini gave birth to Balaram in Gokul. Now, in the meantime, Devaki was the, in the prison cell of Kamsa Maharaj. Krishna had first appeared in the 
heart of the Vasudev Maharaj. Vasudev Maharaj means Vishuddha Sattva. So Krishna's name is Vasudev. Sattvam Vishuddham Vasudeva Shabditam. Krishna's name is Vasudev. It means the son of Vasudev. First one has a long A. Vasudev is a long, short A. Vasudev. And the son of Vasudev is called Vasudev. Understand? So the word Vasudev with a short A is, is a Sanskrit term. It means Vishuddha Sattva. Pure existence beyond Sattva, Rajas and Tamas. Three gunas of this world. So the Supreme Lord is called Vasudev because Krishna only appears in that heart which is Vasudev. Vishuddha Sattva. So Krishna first appeared in his heart and then by Diksha he was transferred to the heart of Devaki. When Krishna was in the heart of Devaki, then she was shining so much that even persons who came to the prison, they could not even see. They could not approach Vasudeva and Devaki. There was so much light. And the Devatas, all the demigods, they knew, oh Krishna is about to be born. So the Devatas, knowing that Krishna was about to be born, seeing the effulgence of Devaki, they became ecstatic. Hmm? So Krishna is a Ganesham, like a rain cloud. So when the rain cloud appears in the sky, and the first drops of rain begin to fall, then four types of people become happy. Who becomes happy? One, the farmer. The farmers all become happy because they need the rain. Two, the peacocks. When it starts to rain, the peacocks spread their feathers and begin to dance. Three, the chatak birds. Because the chatak bird never drinks water from a lake or a river or a, a puddle or from anywhere. The chatak bird only drinks the raindrops coming directly from the cloud. So the chatak bird is always very thirsty. And then when he sees the rain cloud, oh, he's very happy. <laughs> and then the last one, they are the elephants. Because in the hot summer, the elephants are very agitated by the heat. So when the, when the rain clouds come, then the elephants become happy. So in the same way, as the farmer, the peacock, the chattak birds and the elephants become happy. So similarly, when all the devatas and the rishis saw that Devaki was shining with effulgence because Krishna will soon be born, then they also became happy. So who is who in this analogy? Lord Brahma is like the farmer. Why? Because Lord Brahma is managing the universe and it became chaotic. And now Krishna will come and, and help him in the cultivation of the, of the affairs of the universe. So Brahma is like the farmer and Brahma was very happy. Then who is like a peacock? Yes, Lord Shiva. Because Lord Shiva's name is Nilakanta. His neck is blue because he took the poison from the churning of the ocean of milk, but he didn't swallow it, he kept it in his throat, and his throat became blue. So because peacocks also have a blue throat, so Lord Shiva is like the peacock. And when he realized, oh, Krishna is about to be born, just as peacocks spread their feathers and dance, so Lord Shiva was dancing with his Dhammarudra, huh? and he was also very happy. So then, who is like the Chatak bird? Narad Muni. Narad Muni, Davarshi Narad, he's a Rishi among the Devas. So Narad Muni was in ecstasy because he wants to uh, uh, witness the nectar of Sri Krishna's Lila, Krishna Lila Amrita. And last of all, the other demigods like Indra, uh, they were like the elephants because they were being uh, punished, they were suffering under the oppression of the various demons and Krishna will come and take away the heat of that suffering. So in this way, all the various types of devas and rishis, they assembled in the sky and they began to offer prayers to Krishna in the womb of Devaki. So what did they say? Satyapratam satya parantri satyam satyasyonim nitam cha satyay Satyat, um, satyat, satyasya satyam rita satya nitram satyatmakam tvam sharanam prapannaha. They said, Oh Krishna, you are satyavarata. That means you are always true to your vow. What is Krishna's vow? Mat, man, nishtam sharanam goshtam mannatam tasmat mat sharanam goshtam mat. Natam mat parigraham 
Gopaye Swatmayogena So Yamte Brata Ahita. Krishna has said, My devotees, especially my bridge basses, they are fully surrendered to me. I am their Nath, the Lord of their heart. I am their family member. So it's my duty to protect them. This is my vow. Krishna said this when Indra sent the rain before he lifted Govardhan Hill. So Yamte Brata Aita, I must protect my bridge basses. So Krishna's main brat is to protect his loving devotees. So he is Satya Pratam, Satya Param, he is the supreme truth. Brahman is not uh, supreme. That's only a partial light. That is the Angsik Abbas, partial Abbas of the light emanating from Krishna. Paramatma, in the hearts of the yogis, he is not supreme. He is only one small expansion of expansion of expansion of Krishna. Tadikatma Rupa, and among the Tadikatma Rupa, he is of the Swangsa uh, uh, aspect. So, also this Paramatma. Krishna said, Atava Bahunaitayam a king yatayam atava adhuna Vistabhyaha midam Krishna Eka angshain as titojagat As Paramatma, just one small manifestation of my power. I am pervading and supporting the whole universe. So who is Satyam Param? Maharajaki Jai! Satya Pratam Satya Param Bhagavan, Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna is Satyam Param the Supreme Truth. Satyam Param Dhimahi. So Satya Pratam Satya Param, three Satyam. Krishna is the Absolute Truth in three phases. Always in the past, in the present and in the future. <laughs> then Nihitams Tasatye. That means Krishna is situated in the truth. Krishna Brinda Banam Prachadja Paramekam Nagachati. He never leaves Brindavan, so he's always situated in the truth. That Brindavan Dham is the eternal transcendental reality. Urita Satya Netram. All the senses of Krishna are transcendental. So his activities. Uh, he is nirgun, that means he has no material qualities. He is niskriya, means not that he has no activities like a Brahman, but he has no material activities. He is nirikar, means he has no vikar transformation caused by the three gunas, but he has sattvic vikar, transformations of his body in ecstasy in his loving relations with his devotees. So, satyasya satyam, Krishna is the truth of the truth. Hmm? And the demigod said, Satyatmakam tam sharnam prapanna, so we surrender to you. In this way, the demigods, they glorified Sri Krishna with so many prayers. Swayam sumatirya sudustajam dumam bhavanavam bhimam adabra sauridaha bhavakpadam dora navam apate nidaya yata sadanugra ho bhavan. They said, Oh my Lord, you are like the sun, always shining. So mo no Maya. Maya is like the darkness. There cannot be any darkness on the sun. So Krishna knows no Maya, no darkness. In Krishna, there is nothing but Ananda, Satchitananda. He's full of joy. Hmm? And the great devotees, they cross over the ocean of material existence by taking shelter of the boat of your lotus feet. But if someone will cross an ocean in a boat, then if someone else wants to come, they cannot cross. But the Devata said the miracle is that when the sadhus cross the ocean of material existence in the boat of the shelter of your lotus feet, they leave the boat on the other side for the others to cross. So this verse is actually glorifying what? Oh my Lord, your sadhus establish Satsampradaya. Satsampradaya, the eternal hmm? Bhagavat Guru Parampara. Hmm? This Bhagavat Guru Parampara is always giving the facility for the living entities to take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna and go to Goloka Vrindavan. So, Sadhanugraho Bhavan, oh Krishna, you Sadhanugraho Bhavan has three meanings. Sat Anugra first means you give mercy only to your devotees, those to your pure devotees, not to others. So if other persons want mercy, they cannot go to Krishna directly, they have to go to Krishna's pure devotees. So Sat Anugra means you give mercy only to your devotees, not to others. Your mercy, then the next meaning, Sat Anugraha, the Sat, the Vaishnavas, they are your mercy. 
Samsara Dava Nalali Daloka Tranaya Karuna Ganaganatma. Krishna is the ocean of all good qualities, and just as a cloud comes from the ocean, so simply a cloud of all Krishna's good qualities appears in this world, and then that cloud rains down Krishna's mercy in the desert where there's no water at all. So, what is that cloud? What is that form which is composed of the condensation of all Krishna's wonderful qualities and mercy? That is Gurudev, that is Sadhanugraha, hmm? the pure devotees. So Krishna gives mercy to his devotees, Krishna gives mercy through his devotees, and the devotees are his mercy. These are the three meanings. In this way, the devotees offered many beautiful prayers to see Krishna, and then they departed from there. Gradually, gradually, this day came. Actually, tomorrow at midnight. Hmm? Tomorrow at midnight. That means on uh, July the 18th, 3228 BC. So that is 5240 years ago, tomorrow. Exactly. Uh, in Badrapad, hmm? on the Astami, on the eighth uh, day of the eighth moon of the Krishna Paksha, in the dark fortnight, at midnight, Sri Krishna appeared. Hmm? Devaki and also her maidservants, they thought by Yogamaya that she gave birth to a child. But that's not what happened. Krishna who was Prakat in her womb, just disappeared from there and then became Prakat before, before that. And how did this child appear? Such a wonderful, Adbhut, Adbhut child. Why? Because when babies are born, their eyes are closed. But this child, when he was born, his eyes were open. Very big, beautiful lotus eyes looking here and there. When babies are born, they have wispy hair. <laughs> but this baby had a thick, curling black hair down to his shoulders. <laughs> when babies are born, they are naked. But this baby was not na naked. This baby was at the boot. He was wearing a golden crown. He was wearing the uh, of money, a jewel upon his chest. He was wearing rings, he was wearing bangles, he was wearing angad, armlets. He was wearing a golden waist belt. He was wearing rings on his toes and uh, nupur, and bells on his ankles. He was dressed in a beautiful golden cloth and with a garland and smeared with sandalwood paste. And all decorations were there. So this was an Adabut child. And also when a child is born, usually they have two arms, <laughs> mainly. <laughs> but this child had four arms. <laughs> and in the upper arms, in his upper arms, he had the uh, chakra and the club, two weapons. And his lower arms, he had the padma, the lotus flower, and the shank. But actually his shank is also a weapon. Why? Because when Krishna blows the shank, the conch shell, then all obstacles are destroyed. All the demons, wives have abortions, miscarriages, and every, all auspiciousness comes to the world. Even in the hellish planets, in Kumbhipaka, where the, the servants of Yamaraj are roasting people in boiling oil for their sins, then when Krishna blows his conch, all the cooking in Kumbhipaka stops, and everyone becomes freed and they go to Vaikuntha. So that his conch is also a weapon. Hmm? But baby Krishna was holding up to the chakra and the vada. Why? Because the little baby was saying, Oh, come on Kamsa, let's go. <laughs> Don't be afraid, if Kamsa will come, I'll deal with him. <laughs> so then, when Basudeva and Devaki saw this very astonishing Adbhut Shishu, astonishing child, they began to offer prayers. <laughs> they said, Oh, you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead. You are the cause of all causes. You are the Upadan, the ingredient of reality, and the Nimitta, the instrumental cause of reality. Everything. You are to be honored and worshipped by all the Devatas. And you offered many prayers. But then Devaki was thinking, if I go to my Sakis and say, Oh, look, I have a very beautiful child. Then my Sakis, they will laugh. And they'll say, how can you say, aren't you afraid of committing an offense? 
This is Bhagavan, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He has four arms. How can you say this is my child? So Devaki was thinking, I don't want my motherhood to be criticized. So please, become like a natural child. So then, that uh, baby became, Shukadeva Goswami says, Prakrita Shishu. Prakrit Shishu. Now, Shishu means baby, and Prakrit can mean material, but in this sense it doesn't mean material. The word Prakrit has different meanings. Prakrit can mean original nature. Hmm? Prakrista Rumpain Krita, the most excellent form. So he became the most excellent form, his original nature, Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna. Hmm? So that means that at that moment, Mother Yashoda in Gokul had given birth to Yashoda Nanda and Krishna like a natural baby and then just then when she prayed to Krishna's expansion Vasudev Krishna in Mathura then Krishna from Gokul by Yogamaya was transferred to the prison cell there and that forearm form entered into Krishna and now Prakrit Shishu Swayam Bhagavan Sri Krishna was there. Krishna said, if you are afraid of Kamsa, don't worry. I, you should carry me, Basudev Maharaj, carry me across the Jamuna River to Gokul and exchange me with the child of Yashoda. So then, Basudev Maharaj looked and he saw that a basket appeared there. And in the basket there was a very comfortable Tempopedic pillow. <laughs> Very, very comfortable pillow was there. And so then, Vasudev Maharaj took the baby Krishna and put him in the basket. And when he did this, the shackles fell off. His hands and his feet. The gate of the um, prison cell also opened by itself. And because Mother Yashoda had just given birth to Krishna, then she gave birth to Yogamaya. Yogamaya was in the womb of Yashoda along with Krishna and just as the wind blows and the lotus flower moves so Yogamaya went and the lotus of Krishna came out from the womb of Yashoda no pain at all and then when Yogamaya came out immediately Madhya Yashoda fell asleep at that exact moment so Madhya Yashoda thought that she only had one child <laughs> but she was. She felt, I'm so tired from the childbirth and I fell asleep, but I didn't know whether it was a boy or a girl or anything. She just fell asleep. So when, as soon as Yoga Maya came, Yoga Maya covered everyone. And Madhya Shoda went to sleep, everyone fell asleep. And in Mathura, Yoga Maya's shadow, that is Maha Maya, made all the prison guards and everyone fall asleep in Mathura also. So then Basudev Maharaj could pick up baby Krishna in the basket and holding him by his heart. Basudev Maharaj came out from the prison and came out onto the bank of Jamuna. And there was torrential rain like a monsoon. And the Jamuna was overflowing and with big waves. So, but Basudev Maharaj was carrying Krishna and not one drop of water was falling on Vasudev Maharaj. Wherever he went, he wasn't getting wet. He was thinking, these clouds are quite strange. <laughs> They're raining everywhere, but not one drop is coming on me. But actually, Ananta Dev had appeared there and became like an umbrella over the head of Vasudev Maharaj. And even if Ananta Dev wasn't there, then still no, the, rain, the clouds were not raining. But Ananta Devi didn't want to take any chances, so just to be on the safe side, he came there. He said, I have a chance to do some seva. And Ananta Shesh was covering Vasudeva and Krishna, but Vasudeva didn't see him. Vasudeva was just worried, I have to take my baby in the dark night in the rain across the Goku. So when he came onto the bank of the Jamuna, there were high waves and it was flooding. He thought, Where can I cross? How can I cross? And he couldn't see a way to go. But there are some places in the Jamuna where there are sandbanks, you know, and it's very shallow. If you've ever been on a boat in Jamuna, sometimes your boat can get stuck. It's a, a big surprise sometimes. Then everyone has to get out and push the boat. <laughs> so, Bosdei Maharaj was looking for some shallow place, but he couldn't see any. But then he saw one jackal. 
and the jackal was walking across the Jamuna and the water was only this far up the legs of the jackal. So Basudev Maharaj said, oh, this is a good place to cross. So then Basudev Maharaj he began to follow behind that jackal. It has a very deep meaning. First of all, if a person is carrying out the order of Krishna, Guru, Guru gives order to the disciple, that's Krishna's order. So just as Basudev Maharaj was carrying out the order of Krishna, not one drop of rain could fall on his head because Ananta Dev was always protecting him. So in the same way, if the disciple is following the order of Krishna given by Guru Dev, then you should know that the hand of Guru Dev is always above the head of that disciple, protecting him from all karma. Not one drop of his karma can come to him. Hmm? Gurudev is always protecting the disciple as long as he's trying to follow the order of Gurudev. And if some obstacle comes, now Vasudev Maharaj came across a big obstacle. He could not cross the river. But he did not give up. He never thought, oh, I can't cross today. I'll go back. Maybe I'll try tomorrow. And, but he was determined. So in the same way, if a disciple is determined to carry out the instructions of his spiritual master, then, oh, so his guru will send some sign how to do it properly. So in the same way, Yoga Maya sent a jackal to show the Basudev Maharaj, you can cross here. This is the place where you can cross. So Basudev Maharaj began to cross the Jamuna there. But as he went further and further, the water got deeper and deeper. It came up to his knees. It came up to his waist. It came up to his elbow. Basudev Maharaj was now carrying the basket on his head. And the water was coming up to here and he was thinking, oh, this cold water should not touch the baby. Otherwise he may get pneumonia and jaundice. But Yamuna Devi, Yamuna Devi was thinking, if someone wants to cross the river, they have to pay a tax. So I'm not going to allow him to cross the river unless he gives me a tax. And what is that tax? Krishna's foot dust. So on the one hand, Vasudev Maharaj was trying to lift Krishna higher and higher. <laughs> so Krishna's feet were going higher and higher. And on the other hand, Jamuna Devi wanted to get the foot dust of Krishna. <laughs> so when there's two people and they have a disagreement about something, then it's always better to get a third person to come and be the mediator and they can negotiate a peace, a deal between them. So in this uh, disagreement between Vasudev Maharaj, the water should not touch the baby. And Jamuna, I must touch his lotus feet. So the mediator was Krishna himself, and maybe Krishna put his foot out from the basket and touched the Jamuna. <laughs> and when the lotus foot of Krishna touched the Jamuna, then the level went down, and the water parted, and very easily Vasudev Maharaj crossed him. Jamuna Deviki! So, <laughs> then Vasudev Maharaj, Everyone was sleeping in Nanda Gokul. Hmm? And he snuck into the maternity ward, hmm? and the uh, Prasuti Gara, the, Prasuti Gara the, the, the maternity room of Yashoda, where everyone was sleeping, and he saw that a baby girl was there. And he put down Krishna, and then he took the baby girl, and then he was returning to Mathura. Now one may say, this is not very good. Vasudev Maharaj, to save his own son, was willing to sacrifice, take this girl back to be killed by Kamsa Maharaj. Huh? So this is very bad. But we cannot uh, uh, criticize Vasudev Maharaj because he's Vasudev. Vishuddha Sattva, completely pure. So he had faith in the words of the Devatas. Asya ste astamog harabo hanta yam bahasei buddha. The eighth child of David, he will kill Kamsa. So he knew that this will come true, so he wasn't concerned. And also, he was thinking, who are these six children who have been sacrificed? The six children who were sacrificed, they are Shabda, Sparsha, Rupa, Rasa, Ganda, and Deyatma Abhiman. They symbolize our attachment to uh, Shabda, sound. I want to listen to some mundane music. Ah, really? Hmm? No. This attachment, you have to kill. Shabda, Sparsha. 
I want to touch something very soft. Hmm? Sparsha, Rupa, I want to see something very beautiful. Rasa, I want to taste something very delicious. Ganda, I want to smell something very fragrant. Hmm? Mater all material things. And Dayatma Abhiman, I am this body. Hmm? So, all sadhus, they are ready to sacrifice these six attachments for the sake of attaining taste in Harikata. So, similarly, Vasudev Maharaj has no fault. He was ready to sacrifice uh, these uh, six children for the appearance of Sri Krishna. So, Vasudev Maharaj, he was carrying the girl back to Gopu. Now, there's some mystery here. It is said that Kalpa Bedu Ishu Harikata Subhava. That means that Krishna comes in once in every day of Brahma. You know? Krishna Leela is like a ala chakra. If there's fire on the end of a rope and you swing it around, hmm, then you, it makes a circle like this. So, in the same way, every Leela of Krishna eternally exists. Tomorrow, uh, on the Janmastami, Krishna is being born in one universe. And then six days later, he kills Putana. But in another universe, while he's killing Putana here, he's just being born in that universe. And then in the first universe, when he's killing Trinavarta, in the second universe, he's killing Putana. And in the third universe, he's being born. So in this way, each Leela is going from universe to universe. So every single Leela of Krishna is eternal. Now, how long does it take for Krishna's Leela to travel from one universe through all the universes, all the millions of universes that come from the pores of the skin of Mahavishnu? It takes one day of Lord Brahma for, to do a complete circle of all the universes. And this is why Krishna is born on Janmastami and the, in, once in a day of Brahma and then he goes around all the other universes and comes back to the same point and he appears again uh, in that universe on the day of, on, on the next day of Brahma like this. So Kalpa Bedeshu Harikata Subhava means that in different Kalpas, in different days of Brahma, Krishna does the Leela differently. So in regard to Krishna appearing in two places at the same time. Appearing from the womb of Yashoda in Gokul, that is Yashoda Nandan, that is the original form of Krishna, Swayam Bhagavan. And Krishna's expansion, that is his Vaibhav Prakash, opulent manifestation, is, appears, it's not really a Janma, it's, a, it's an it's Avirbhav, an appearance, you see? In Braj, it's Janma, born like a human child. But in Mathura, it's Avirbhav, he just disappeared there and appeared there. Because there is sweetness, human-like pastimes, and there in Mathura is some... There is also sweetness there, but Aishwarya, the opulent relations are manifested. So his Vaibhava Prakash appears there. Now, in one Nkalpa, when Devaki says, Oh, please become like a natural child, then the child of Yashoda is brought by Yoga Maya, comes there, and the four-armed one enters into Krishna. And then Vasudev brings him back to Gokul. This is in one yuga. In another yuga, Krishna appears there, and then Vasudev Maharaj is carrying the, the Vasudev Krishna across the Jamuna, and halfway across the Jamuna, Vasudev Maharaj slips in the mud and drops the baby in the Jamuna. And then he's very desperate, oh, where did he go? And then he grabs the baby and takes him out. The one he dropped was Vasudev Krishna, and the one he caught was Yashodananda Krishna. So, right in the middle point between Mathura and Gokul, Huh? Right? So Vasudev was in go in the, in Vasudev Krishna is in Mathura up to the middle points and when they come to the exact <laughs> middle points and then Gokul begins, it became the, the Krishna of Brindavan like this. And Vasudev Krishna en also enters into him, into the original form. And then in another yuga, as another kalpa, as we have told, Vasudev Maharaj brings the Vasudev Krishna and puts him down, but he doesn't see. Hmm? He doesn't see the uh, sweet Krishna. Hmm? So when he puts down the opulent Krishna, then the, he's merged into the Yashoda Nanda and Krishna, and he picks up the girl and takes the girl. Okay? So, this is in different ages. Many people think that Krishna is the, the son of 
uh, Vasudev and Devaki. But they are they cannot be Brajabasis. Once I was with Guru Gurudev and we went to Gokul Mahavan. And there is the Chauras Kumbha, the 84 pillars in the place where Krishna was born. So the Pujari there was telling everyone, stand in a line, take Mahaprasadam and swing baby Krishna and everyone go, ha 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 ha. You know how it is in, in Gokul there. And he began to explain how Krishna was born in Mathura and Vasudev Maharaj brought him here. So my Gurudev said, I think that you are not really a resident of Gokul. Because only a resident of Mathura can say Krishna was born in Mathura. And bridge buses will only say Krishna was born in Braji Gokul. Like this. And then that Brahmin said, but in Sriman Bhagavatam it is written that Vasudev carried Krishna. So then Gurudev said, oh, that was the expansion of Krishna. But original Krishna is born from Yashoda in Gokul. That Brahmin said, but that's not written in Srimad Bhagavatam. Gurudev said, no, no, no. It is written in many places in Srimad Bhagavatam. Hmm? So we'll come to that. Now, when Vasudev brought the, the baby girl back, and then by Yoga Maya, all the shackles came back on his arms and legs, the gates uh, closed, and uh, the baby began to cry, and the gods woke up. They called Kamsa, oh Kamsa Maharaj, the next baby has been born, come, come, come. And Kamsa Maharaj came running there. And then Kamsa Maharaj was about to grab the baby. And David, he said, oh, it's, you have no danger from this baby, it's not a boy, it's a girl, a girl cannot kill you. She will be, she will be your um, daughter-in-law, when you have a son, she can marry your son. A girl cannot harm you. But Kamsa Maharaj was not in a mood to listen. And he went to grab the baby by the legs and smash that baby also. But just when he reached out, then that baby manifests the form of Durga and kicked Kamsa Maharaj in the head and he fell on the ground. Hmm? So Shukadev Goswami said, Adrishya Vishnu Anuja. Hmm? Adrishyat Anuja Vishnu, sorry. Adrishyat Anuja Vishnu. He said, then, the Anuja means the younger sister of Krishna appeared there. So even though people say in Srimad Bhagavatam that uh, Krishna is uh, born in Mathura and goes to Gokul, but here, Shukadev Goswami says, the younger sister of Krishna appeared there. So, everyone knows she was born from Yashoda, so this is a hint, Shukadev Goswami is not just hinting, but directly saying, but those whose eyes are covered, they cannot realize it. Hmm? He's directly saying that Yashoda gave birth to twins, and one was Krishna, and the Anuja was, was this girl. Okay? So then, she, then, uh, uh, that, um, with eight arms, with many weapons, was in the sky and said to Kamsa, You fool, the one who will kill you has already been born elsewhere. So again, now Durga is saying, the one who will kill Kamsa is born somewhere else. Not only that, but we see that Lord Brahma has prayed to Krishna. No midyate brava paseita de dambaraya, gunjava tangsa pari pichala san mukaya. Banyastra jaka vala vetra vishana venam, lakshma sriye mridupate pashupango jaya. Pashupango jaya means, Lord Brahma is saying, Oh my Lord, you are standing before me as a coward boy with very small lotus feet and you are Kashupanga Jaya, born from a, the cowherder. That means you are the son of Madhya Shoda. So Lord Brahma is a Brahmanic Vyakti. He's an authoritative person. So Lord Brahma in his prayers also says that Krishna is the son of Nanda and Yashoda. Also Shukadev Goswami has said, Nayam Sukapo Bhagavan Deinam Gopika Sutta Anyone cannot control Gopika Sutta, the son of a Gopi, Krishna, like those bridge bases who have natural love for him. So Shukadev Goswami also says Gopika Sutta, Krishna is the son of a Gopi. So in many places in Srimad Bhagavatam, Jayati Janani Vaso Devaki Janma Vado. It's only a theory that he is the son of Devaki. That is called, you know, one theory is in Vasudhism, that is called Mayavad. So there's another theory, Devaki Janma Vado. 
<laughs> it's only a th it's not to establish truth. It's just a theory that Krishna is the son of Devaki. Hmm? But one may say, but many places in Shastra, Krishna is called Devaki Nanda. Even Madhvacharya has written, Devaki Nandana, Nanda Kumara, Brindavananjana, Gokula Chanda, Kanda Palasana Sundara Rupa, Bandit Gokula Nandita Pada. Our great Madhvacharya, he called Krishna Devaki Nanda. So, if you look in the Adi Purana, there it is said, Dvainam ne nandabariyaya Yashoda Devari Ticha. That actually Yashoda has two names. Her main name is Yashoda, but she's also named Devaki. So, if you see in Shastra, Krishna is Devaki Nanda, then that Devaki is not Devaki of Mathura, it's Devaki of Braja, that is Mother Yashoda. So, in this way, in different kalpas, Krishna, the pastime is done uh, quite differently. And uh, here, by this pastime of Durga appearing and then telling Kamsamaj, the one who will kill you has been born in another place. Uh, this approves that Krishna is the son of Nanda and Yashoda. So then, Durga disappeared and Kamsamaraj. Became, became very sorry. Hmm? And he said to Vasudeva and Devaki, Oh, your children have died. He killed them. He said, But they, yes, they have died, but it was their own karma. So don't be angry with me. <laughs> There's a typical demon. You will not take responsibility for anything. He said, Your children have died, but it was their karma. When we all have to be tolerant, tolerant and accept our karma. Hmm? Hmm? He said, even today, the, the voice in the sky of the demigods, even the devagers are telling lies these days. What is going on? You can't believe them also. When Vasudev Maharaj heard this, he didn't become angry. He said, it's true. People in this world are affected by illusion, anger, desires, lust, and depression, and so on. Lamentation. Why? Because they're always struggling with some situation. Because they don't see that this object in front of them is the uh, immediate cause of their problem. But behind the immediate cause of their problem is the intimate, intermediate cause of their problem. And behind everything is the ultimate cause, and that is God. And God has no problem with anyone. And God is kind to all, He's the friend of everyone. So the reason people's minds are disturbed, they become in anxiety and have all these material emotions is because they're not seeing that behind everything is the hand of God. So Vasudev Maharaj, he said, he accepted, yes, whatever is going on, it is the arrangement of the Lord. And, and then Kamsa, he, he uh, released uh, Vasudev and Devaki. So then, Kamsa Maharaj was thinking, what is going on? Hmm? The eighth child was supposed to kill me, but the eighth child was my Ishta Devi, Durga. Kamsa Maharaj worships Lord Shiva and Durga. Hmm? Mainly demons they worship. Uh, Sh Shiva and Durga, like Ravan worship Lord Shiva. Huh? So, he was wondering what is going on. So then his advisors came to him. Hmm? And they and they said to him, Comes up, don't be worried. The eighth child has been born elsewhere. The child who will kill you has been born elsewhere. We can send the soldiers everywhere to kill all the children who have been born within ten days ten days earlier and for ten days in the future we'll kill all the children. Don't be afraid of Vishnu at all. Why? Because the life and soul of Vishnu is the uh, uh, the yagyas and the life and soul of the yagyas is the vedas and the brahmanas are performing the yagyas so if we'll destroy the brahmanas and destroy the vedas and stop all the yagyas then vishnu won't be able to do anything hmm? shiva won't do anything because he's like a monk he's detached he's renounced look brahma is too old Hmm? And uh, Vishnu, all his strength is coming from the Brahmanas, the Vedas and the Yagyas. So we'll stop those things and you'll be safe. So then comes the Maharaj, yes, yes, okay, now go and destroy all Dharma everywhere. So then Kamsamaraj be began his atrocities. 
So this is the history of how Krishna appeared in Mathura. But in the meantime, how Krishna in his original form, Swayam Bhagavan, Rasik Shekhar, Paramakarun, supremely merciful and the reservoir of all rasas, very sweet, none of us, human like Krishna. Hmm? How he appeared in Gokul from the womb of Madhya Shoda and how all but the bridge buses headed by Nandamaraj celebrated his appearance will explain tomorrow. Hmm? So tomorrow is actual Jan Mastami, Krishna's, my Krishna's birthday. So on my Krishna's birthday, I don't want to talk so much about it. I will not speak about Vasudeva and Mathura. <laughs> we give our pronouns to Mathura Dham. It is very great. But we want to be following in the mood of the bridge basis, always. You know that Rishila Raghunath Taskaswami said, Api Chaktwa Lakshmi Patin Ito Vyomanayanim Give up all attachment to Lakshmi Pati, the Lord of Vaikuntha, the Lord of Lakshmi Devi. That also means the Lord of Kubja in Mathura also. And the Lord of Rukmini and Satyabhama in Dwarka also. Only have attachment. Brajai Radha Krishna Rati Mani Dautam Bajamana. Only have attachment to Radha and Krishna in Vrindavan and serve them. And they will bestow upon you the jewel of pure love. So please come tomorrow. And uh, I don't know the exact schedule tomorrow. So I will speak with Maharaj just now and we'll arrange and we'll make an announcement what time I believe there'll be Abhishek again. Is it correct, Pujariji? So there'll be Abhishek again and uh, there'll be lots of Kirtan and Harikata throughout the day. So I'll find out the schedule and announce to you and we'll see you tomorrow. And uh, everyone can give blessings to the newborn baby and say to the newborn baby, Jio Shamalala, Jio Shamalala, Pirite In Mathura, when Krishna is born, Vasudeva and Devaki are offering prayers. All the demigods are offering prayers. But when <laughs> and begging, please bless us. But in Gokul, when Krishna is born, uh, then everyone is giving blessings to him. Jio Oh little baby, may you have a long life. Uh, in in Mathura, baby Krishna with four arms has the weapons. He he told Vasudeva and Devaki, Oh, you have been my devotees for many lifetimes. Before you were Prishni and Sutapa, and I appeared as your son Prishni Garbha. After that, you became Kasyapa and Aditi, and I became Vaman Dev. And now you have become Vasudev and Devaki, and I have appeared as your son. Yeah? But what is Krishna doing in Vrindavan? He's not telling the history, showing I am omniscient and I know everything. I know all about your past lives, and I have appeared before you many times before. What is Krishna doing in Vrindavan? <laughs> and all bridge bass is like, oh, Matarekana. And so that's why the seed of all the Vedas is Om, because baby Krishna was saying Om, Om, Om. This is the origin of the Vedas, baby Krishna calling his Om, Om, Om. So there's a complete difference between <laughs> between Mathura and Nanda Gokul, Brajamanda, Krishna crying Uwawa and Sanjabe Sunandubua means the uh, Krishna's auntie that is Nanda Maharaj's sister. Sunanda so is coming and say, Oh, don't cry, baby Krishna, don't cry. Be peaceful. <laughs> so tomorrow we will leave Mathura very far behind and we'll come to the dust of Gokul. Bye, Vrindavan, 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 Bye, Vrind